Hello everybody, my name is KevGuy378 and welcome back to If My Heart Had Wings. We had just finished making dinner and everyone is coming in. One after another, the boarders came into the dining hall. They were surprised at how different the food was to the usual. There's a general idea of meal times for the boarders. Although, I usually make meals on a consistent schedule, the time when everybody comes to eat is not set. It's okay if you come late, and it's okay if you don't eat. That's why we often eat at different times. This is the first time since I came here that we've all gathered at the same time like this. Today was the only time that I had told them in advance. Okay everyone, please take a seat. You too, Agaha. <laughs> Go ahead. Enjoy your meal. The boarders, looking at each other, cautiously move the food towards their mouths. I can hear the word delicious coming from the borders. What is? It's true. It really is tasty. Basque style chicken stew. I was the one that had made it, but I didn't know how it would taste and I imagined that it wouldn't be very good. It was different to the Western or Chinese food that I usually make, in that I normally don't use spices that make it easy to understand the flavor. The meat stewed in the tomato soup was tender and was surprisingly refreshing. Most importantly, the flavor of the meat had really been drawn out, so I had no complaints at all about the taste. It's the kind of thing that you eat on a hot summer's day, when you don't have much of an appetite. Mm, <laughs> the salad served in a big bowl was divided between everyone. There were cucumbers, tomatoes, and lettuce, and also avocado and mozzarella cheese. Even though it was just an elaborate salad again, the reaction was <laughs> Ryuko, a second year like me, and Sane, the third year with the trademark glasses, both seemed to really like it. <laughs> Everyone made a face that kind of showed they knew that. The truth is that today's meal was made under the advice of Miss Hemige. Hemigi here. So that's why Agaha is here. By the way, it seems that Agaha and Ryuko were friends from before. The thing is, it seems the food that I made didn't really go down too well with everyone. Apart from Kanako, all, all of the boarders looked away for a moment, awkwardly. That's why, if there's something you want to say, please talk to me about it, okay? It's a little scary, but I thought I'd try to talk to them about it. It sure is on that empty table right there. There's red, green, yellow, and white, and many other colors, and it looks vivid and colorful. 
food I usually make is ginger pork equals brown, fried rice equals brown, curry equals yellow, yakisoba equals brown, Neapolitan pasta equals red, and so on. But it's all basically comprised of a single color. Everyone's really kind, aren't they? They really care about my feelings. Just because of that, I was unnecessarily worried. For a guy like me, who went to a sports-focused boys' school and lived together with his dad in a kind of a bachelor pad. That was always enough. I never even thought about the color of food. Somehow, that kind of detail is really important in a girl's dormitory. Everyone seems satisfied. It feels like this is the most they've opened up to me so far. If I'm going to say it, now's my chance. Um, can I just say something? I stand up and get everyone's attention. Please listen as you eat. This is about the border's chores. Would it be alright to increase them a little? I'm a student too, so it's pretty tough for me. For example, if I could just get you guys to clean the bathroom, that would really be a big help. Everyone looked at each other as if they were trying to figure out what the others were thinking. To be honest, no one's going to be happy about increasing their chores. But... <laughs> as Yuka, the oldest, responded, the others nodded in agreement. In return, I will try harder than ever to make good food for you. That and one other thing. This is what I really wanted to say. I think that we should get Katori to do some things too. Katori, who was sitting at the end of the table, the furthest away from everyone, who looked uncomfortable while she ate, was surprised to hear her name called. Everybody looked around at Katori. She has a walking disability, but she can still use her hands. There are things that she can do. This had a big impact on everyone, who until just now had been eating the food and saying how delicious it was. They looked at her like they were impressed, but Katori seemed kind of embarrassed. Thanks to Katori helping us, we were able to get the dinner preparations done easily. If that's the case, then maybe we can add another chore. I don't dislike cooking, but to prepare food for several people is physically quite demanding. If that's okay with Katori, could you help me prepare the meals? Thank you. I say, while Katori looks away and quietly nods, without saying anything. It's a little different than the other chores, but in order to be fair, I want Katori to help out where she can from now on. Everyone still had their reservations about the whole thing, so for now, they just quietly looked at each other. Even so, until now, Katori and the other boards have had quite a distant relationship. 
However, I'm the one who understands the situation the least, or rather, the one who understands it the most. Sassy! Hanako raised her hand, then the others followed. So, from tomorrow, let's do our best. Katori was moody until the end, but she kept herself from shouting abuse at me, which I know she's good at. She seemed to understand my intentions. Thanks for today, Agaha. You really helped me out. Same goes for you, too. Pat came waddling from down the corridor. Oh, Ahiru san, doshita no? Miyokuri ni kite kureta no? Waga! Pat flapped his wing towards Agaha. Maybe he's saying thanks for helping Katori. Those are his feelings as her housemate. Ja, heya ni modotta ra tsutaete? The way he replied made it seem like he completely understood what Agaha had said, and Hat waggled his tail as he waddled off. <laughs> okay, take care on your way back. Extend the little wings which fly in the sky highly. Ah. I love this video novel. Ha. Ah. Ha. Ah. Ah. I push down on the heavy pedals and the gears creak. I worry that the chain, which is stretched to its limit, will snap and fly off at some point. However, there's no time to think about that during the hill climb. Ha. Ha. Damn it. I can't do this anymore. The sport is just way too severe. I'm not proud of this, but I decided not to put myself through any pointless hardship. I don't enjoy putting in a lot of effort. Just ahead of me is something fun, so that's why I can do my best. At that time, I was getting closer and closer to it. Huh. 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 Finally, the top of the slope. As I climbed to the top of the slope, the view all of a sudden opened up. Below me is the town, spreading far into the distance and the steep downhill road. Finally, the time has come for my reward. I lower my posture, kick down on the pedal, and accelerate in the blink of an eye. 
In spite of the headwind that would have been so problematic on the flat ground, I cut through it like a bullet. On a downhill slope, speeds can reach close to 80 kilometers per hour. If that were a car driving through the city, it would breeze past as it overtook other cars. If I come off my bike now, I will be seriously injured. No joke, I could even die. After all, when we race, we are almost completely exposed. The road is winding and still not flat. At high speeds, when I entrust my body to the inertia, the wheels bounce on the uneven road surface. Strangely, I don't feel any fear. I only feel overwhelming acceleration. Nevertheless, I mustn't lose concentration. It's not like I hadn't predicted that there might be unforeseen circumstances. Even so, And I am going to end the episode here, everybody. Everyone, thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.